media and welcome any of the public who are watching us on the live stream. Um, so today's uh, council meeting is an extraordinary council meeting um, in that it's not one that was normally, uh, well, it wasn't scheduled, but uh, one that we are having because of some urgent matters that have come up. So uh, sort of just bear with me while I get back onto the agenda. Um, so I'm going to say welcome along. Um, first of all, we've uh, just asked are there um, any apologies? We do have apologies for Councillor Percival and uh, Deputy Tavendale. Uh, are there any other apologies? Someone like to move we accept those ones? Councillor Grobe, Councillor Alalani, thank you. Those in favour say aye. 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 Those against? It is carried. Um, right. Uh, next up, we have declarations of interest. So, councillors with any declarations of interest that you need to make? No, that's fine. So, moving on to the decision reports. Uh, first of all, on page six, Tourism Wine Tacky Limited, confirmation of the authority on that one. Mayor yeah, Kirchner, I'm happy to move that recommendation. So, um, just, just to. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to ask. Mr. Hope's absence, whether Mr. Powell wants to say anything on this one. Oh, it's just procedural, um, Mr. Nelson. Right, so, so um, <coughs> Council Hopkins is moving that the Council confirms the Mayor's authority to provide evidence of undertakings required from third parties in relation to Council's ongoing financial support of Tourism Attacky Limited, seconded Councillor Lordstein. Uh, any comments? Oh, Councillor McGrovey. Yes, just under the background um, statement on um, page, it's on seven. And the words are, to be clear, this decision is limited to confirming a position council's review and is not an open-end decision. But yet the paragraph above says, therefore wants an ongoing authority to be confirmed. I think there needs to be a time frame on that, if that's appropriate. And I'm thinking perhaps for 12 months. I think we need to review this more often than just have one hour. Um, yeah, essentially, it is required every 12 months. I think, well, um, I can only assume that the, the blurb there um, referring to an ongoing authority is that um, it, it is one that's um, it's the same authority, but it is renewed every 12 months. So I'm certainly comfortable that, it, that that is what's required. Um, and in fact, that's one of the reasons why it is here with us today. But, um, the same statement that is said every year, so the 2018-19 one can't carry through, so the new one will have to be Okay. Uh, any other comments? Uh, just a question. Like it, it does say confirmation that the authority granted, but <laughs> I read it as more of a... Um, Letter of support, if you like, rather than a mm. The intention of the letter is to to, to allow the tourism attacking to meet the going concern concept, going concern test. Um, the authority is the authority given to me for delegation to, to essentially to okay. me to be able to provide that as opposed to whatever the alternative is. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, but I'm going to put it, those in favour of the uh, motion, please say aye. Aye. Um, against. That's very Thank you. Um, now move on to the uh, next report. Um, um, sorry. Right, bit of paper in front of me. Um, so a recommendation of uh, appointments of local controllers and local recovery manager. Um, do you want to speak to this one? Just about? Um, yeah, I can just speak briefly to it. Um, the council is a little constrained currently in terms of the local controllers that we have available to us um, with Lichelle Kayan uh, leaving us at the end of March. Uh, we will have at that, at that time, uh, in effect, one local controller, which is uh, obviously far too thin. Um, Ms. Guyon has offered to make herself available as a controller following her departure and while she still remains within the district. Uh, and uh, I'm very uh, uh, satisfied and, and grateful uh, with that. Um, 
and uh, Roger Cook uh, will also be trained as both controller and recovery manager uh, with Lachelle's departure uh, as, as well. So uh, controller training is, is more exacting than it used to be. Uh, and unfortunately in 2020, because of COVID-19, uh, there has been no uh, controller training effectively. So we're in arrears uh, uh, as a country, as well as, as locally in relation to getting controllers suitably certified under the um, Civil Defence and Emergency Management Act. So those, those steps are being taken and um, we're seeking your approval for the appointment uh, or the recommendation of appointment of those controllers, uh, which will go through to CDAM uh, Joint Committee. Okay, so so Councillor Brogan, uh, move thing. And Councillor King, second that. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, ultimately, as the sort of Defence Emergency Management Group um, for Otago, the, <coughs> the, 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 the final decision, um, obviously, was much swayed by the uh, recommendations that come out of different councils uh, for the areas. Um, Councillor King. Oh, just, just a question to help my understanding. Is this a paid position or? A, well, work? yeah, interest, that's an interesting question. Um, different local authorities obviously have different resources available to them. So in the case of Dunedin City, they do not use external personnel. They have sufficient um, you know, sufficient numbers within the organisation to be always able to appoint controllers from within the organisation. Smaller local authorities don't have that luxury and we're, we're amongst those um, because the, the controller, um, you know, it's, it's a very demanding role when, when a disaster does strike and uh, quite often senior personnel are being utilised within the organisation to deal with asset damage, et cetera, at the same time. So uh, they are volunteer roles, but it is my intention to establish a per diem allowance um, and, to, and to pay uh, controllers when they are in the role acting as controller. And because of the increased um, demands on people in relation to training uh, to also provide a reduced uh, the DM for people who are required to go away on training as well. Uh, it's a um, quite a demanding role that we expect these people to undertake, and and some fair compensation, I believe, is appropriate. Uh, yes, the CD and I have had a number of discussions on this because it is um, it's very difficult to expect. Yeah, it, it, it used to be a much um, lighter role. Now the requirements around gaining accreditation to be a controller it is uh, something like a week-long course um, that has to be done elsewhere um, the, you know depending on the emergency it might it might be something that lasts for a few hours but equally it could be something that could last for a week or more um, in that case that role is shared amongst a number of people but for any people who are uh, who, who have a day job outside of council, that becomes a very difficult thing for them to sustain. So yeah, whether that's something that the Waitaki District Council has to do, or whether it's something that Otago Civil Defence Emergency Management Group pick up and ask the um, Otago Regional Council to assist with funding through the regional rates, um, that remains to be seen, but uh, it's, it's definitely a um, time that it was looked at so that those people who are giving up a lot of time and providing a lot of um, important skills to do these jobs um, do some recognition financially for that. Um, yeah, Councillor Walston. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just referring to your comments, Mr. Power, uh, you talked about um, Mrs. Guyon being prepared to act as long as she stays in the district um, and give, just given the, the time it takes to training, as, as you both alluded to. Is, is uh, two people like that enough at the present time, or should the council be looking to train up a third person in case Mrs. Guyon does leave the district for employment elsewhere? We, we, we may well do that. Um, the issue is one of identification of suitable people to fill the role and then approaching them uh, to get their agreement to undertake the role. But 
right now we have two people ready and willing to step into <coughs> step into that position. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to have them. That's a, do you think you feel that's enough in the meantime too? Well, we are able, um, as being part of uh, CDAM Otago Group, uh, able to call on the group controllers. So uh, the Otago uh, Regional Council uh, funds uh, group controllers, and and those controllers can be deployed into territorial local authorities if required, and that's that's uh, always the the backstop. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Okay, I should put up the uh, motion. Um, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those against, that's carried. Thank you. Um, right, that uh, finishes the um, public part of our meeting. We do have one item uh, just around the banking of an independent member to the performance audit risk committee, which is being done um, in public excluded due to the um, privacy of, of the people uh, being discussed. So uh, someone would like to move, we go into public excluded. Councillor so Wallstein and Councillor Roby. Those in favour say aye. Aye. Those aye. 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 against, that's carried. So we'll just call this to a close. Thanks to anyone who's joined us. And um, I look forward to uh, seeing you next time. Um,